The little kids nowadays, they're doing everything digital. Back in my day, I had to walk 90 miles to school, I had to draw with rocks on the cave wall and paint with the blood of my enemies. Okay, so I wanna to talk to you guys about one of my favorite methods of practicing drawing. And we're talking about just drawing, not rendering or anything like that. Straight up drawing is actually quite simple. It involves this thing right here, which is a sketchbook. I thought this would be something important for us to talk about because nowadays all you kiddos have your iPads, your phones, your tablets and everything. And our friend, the sketchbook here is feeling a little bit underappreciated. So I'm gonna introduce you guys to my favorite way to actually practice drawing. And I'm gonna show you guys some footage of me drawing in my sketchbook and what that looks like. And hopefully you guys can get a better insight of how you can keep a sketchbook yourself and how it's gonna help you out on your own learning and our journey as well. So. The great thing about a sketchbook is it's pretty much like a visual journal. So anything that comes to mind in the moment, anything that you're interested in, in that specific time, you could put down in the sketchbook. For example, if you have trouble drawing hands, like we all do, you can pull up some pictures on Pinterest or on Google images of hands and do some really quick studies on a page in your sketchbook. And the great thing about studying in your sketchbook is they can take as little time or as much time as you want. And it's really, really simple because all I use are a pencil, and an eraser. It takes a lot of pressure off of you. So if you're working on a blank canvas on your digital tablet, it might be like kind of daunting to think, what am I gonna fill this thing with? How am I gonna apply all the colors and everything onto here? But if you're working in a page in your sketchbook, no one ever has to actually see it. So you're kind of just working for yourself. You know, it's supposed to be sketchy, it's supposed to be quick, and you're allowed to make a lot of mistakes on the way and no page has to be perfect. I mean, there definitely are drawings in my sketchbooks that I just do not like at all, but that's okay to me because I use it as a tool to develop my skills as opposed to something that I'm trying to craft and perfect. And I think one of the things that's really beneficial about a sketchbook when you compare it to a digital tablet or your phone or your iPad, whatever it is, is that there is a finite number of edits that you could do on a single drawing. So let's say you're drawing on your tablet and you make a mistake you can just undo and it's gone. And the thing is that the programs that we use for digital art are so forgiving that you can never really destroy a canvas. You can make as many mistakes as you want. You can cover it up as many times as you want. You can go back for as many edits as you want. So sometimes if we're practicing something, if we're rendering something, we can get caught in this loop of endless edits and it can be really hard to move on from a piece. And by the time you get to the end of a painting and you start doing those minuscule edits, that's the point where your learning actually slows down quite a bit. So when you're sketching physically on a sheet of paper, you can make mistakes and you can erase them, but that paper can only take so much erasing. So at a certain point, you've got to move on to the next piece. And honestly, when it comes to drawing, and we're not talking about rendering on a digital tablet, but when it comes to drawing, the most information you're going to absorb is actually going to come out of that sketching phase where you're analyzing, you're breaking down, and you're trying to understand what is put in front of you. So with these sketchbook pages, it's important to remember that they don't need to be perfect. They're for you and for you only. And really, they should contain a number of subjects or whatever it is that you find interesting, something that you want to learn more about. So for example, I've got some portraits over here on this page that you're probably seeing on the screen right now. And I like to really come back to the sketchbook, especially when I'm having like an art block or something that's really troubling me and just come back and do some basic practice. And I'm trying to put them down in a way that I can read and understand using only lines. And of course, this is just my preference. I like to stop at lines, but you don't have to stop at this. You could even go in with some sketches and some rendering uh, to actually learn more about values. You could even try to apply some paints to your pages to see how you fare with colors. I personally just hate setting up paint and cleaning up afterwards <laughs> but it's not for me i am lazy i mean you could experiment with different materials like charcoal whatever it is but um that's also very dirty so i don't like that but you know i prefer to keep it clean with a mechanical pencil <laughs> and as i flip through these pages as i show you guys the different uh process videos and the b-roll you're gonna see a lot of different things there's anything from portraits of people to just drawings of animals you know where i'm trying to observe the shapes that they're made up of trying to learn some of the anatomy that they have i mean some of these things might not ever actually uh, contribute to anything that I put up on Instagram, but it's just interesting to learn about things and to see how different things work. You know, one day you could just be sitting there thinking, okay, I don't, what does a rhino actually look like from a profile view? So you go on Google images, you look it up and you sketch it down and you kind of leave an imprint of that in your brain. So you have that in the back of your mind. So the next time you're asked to draw a rhino, you kind of have a bit of memory of what they actually look like. It's just like interesting stuff that you might not otherwise have gotten to if you were painting on a blank canvas with all that pressure 
on your digital tablet. And as you're looking at these, some, some of these hand drawings, some of these animal drawings, the really beautiful thing about this is I am focusing on the form and the shapes. There's no color palettes, there's no blend mode, there's no crazy rendering that I gotta do to make it look good, you know, and there's no expectation for it to look a certain way. So it's this super simplified, super easy way to practice drawing. And as I flip through some of these older pages, you can see some of these drawings where I actually use a little bit of shading. Um, there's a bunch of like little cars here that I did because you know, I'm a little bit, I, I'm pretty interested in cars. I mean, it really doesn't have to take long. It could just be 30 minutes sitting down, you and your pencil and your sketchbook and just a subject on your laptop screen. And as I flip through to some of the older drawings, so this is uh, some, I did actually some style studies from uh, one of my favorite Disney artists, uh, Glenn Keane. I tried to look at the way that he simplified the face. And I think this was during a time where I was feeling a little bit of art block with my own art style. Um, I wasn't really sure how to stylize a character effectively. So I said, you know what, maybe it's time to just go back to the basics and learn a little bit about shapes and forms. Just do some simple sketching from somebody I really admire. You know, there was this one time I was feeling a little bit iffy about the anatomy I was drawing. So I went on Google and I looked up some uh, anatomical images and uh, did some really quick sketches. So you can see that there. And some animal drawings here to study the shapes of what I'm looking at. Again, it really is just anything goes. Whatever it is that comes to mind that you think you wanna work on a little bit, can go into your sketchbook. And that page does not have to be perfect. And you might be like, okay, but I could just do this on my iPad or something. But I, I think there's something special about being able to flip through a sketchbook and have everything in one spot in this physical package. And I've had plenty of experience in both traditional and digital art. And I think no matter how good the technology is, there's always a sense of disconnect between you and the canvas, just a tiny bit. It's the feeling of having to look for these files, pulling them up, storing them in these places, you know, whereas with this, you can just flip through the pages, everything is there, you can find a blank page and just go wild. And honestly, nothing can really replicate the feeling of this lead on paper. There is a tactile nature to drawing with lead on paper that just can't really be replicated anywhere else. And the limited number of edits that you could do that kind of forces you to move on to the next drawing. You know what else is cool is you could bring this thing around with you really easily anywhere you go. If you damage it or if you lose it, it's only like 15, 20 bucks. It's not like losing a thousand dollar iPad. I think what it comes down to is it's just simple. It's the most basic way of actually drawing. So it takes all the fluff out of it and it forces you to really just analyze put down on paper and absorb in the process. In terms of size, this one is a uh, five and a half by eight and a half inches, uh, which I think is a little bit small, but really portable if you need that portability. And this big boy right here, I think is nine by 12, I believe. And it's, I think it's a great size because you could do a lot of small drawings on a single page, or you could do one big drawing on the page. There's enough space for that. I mean, it comes down to your personal preference, but you don't want something that's like, like a miniature Bible, you know, like that's, that's ridiculous. You can't even move your fingers around on that. And I see a lot of you guys actually commenting about how you use your finger to draw on your phone. I mean, it's good for, you know, like doing a little bit of color work if you don't have the materials for it, but for actually drawing, like get a pencil, get an eraser, get some pieces of paper, you know, to, like this motion, this is the drawing motion, not like this. For people in that situation, I highly recommend getting a sketchbook and I'm not being sponsored by sketchbooks. I just think it's a really good way to learn how to draw and it's not gonna break the bank. You know, it's it's a pretty cheap option. Anyways, I just wanted to make this video because I know a lot of you art babies out there are pretty new to drawing. So you might've gotten started with an iPad or something and you're just rendering away on every single piece and you're taking up all of your valuable time. So you might wanna consider getting a sketchbook to practice drawing a little bit more efficiently. I mean, there's just so much you could do with it. You know what I should have? I should have launched the sketchbook line before I dropped this video. I'm just kidding. Yeah, if any of you guys have already been keeping a sketchbook, good job. With that being said, just wanted to share this quick tip with you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Other than that, I'll see you guys on the next video. I just want to see y'all succeed and achieve your dreams in life. You know what? Maybe I should launch a sketchbook line or get this. I can take the sketches that I have in my sketchbook, compile them, organize them and put them in an actual book. So you guys can walk through my sketchbook with me. It's not a bad idea. Goodness, it's beautiful. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is kind of surreal to me. You know, I've always thought how cool it'd be if I had one of these when I was a kid. Now it's here. It's